Hi and welcome back. Coding signals for RSI, MSCD and the Z score. In this lecture, we will see many interesting ways to generate the buy and sell signals. You may recall that the RSI shows momentum. So here we will use a counterintuitive approach to generate the buy and sell. We trigger a buy when RSI goes above the upper threshold. We trigger a sell when RSI goes below the lower threshold. This approach is counterintuitive because usually upper threshold is perceived as a boundary from which the buy prices will retrace. So instead of selling at the upper threshold, we are buying at the upper threshold. This approach was first presented by Constance Brown in her book Technical Analysis for the Trading Professionals. Also notice the asymmetry between the upper and the lower threshold. The upper threshold is defined as 70 and the lower threshold is defined as 40 instead of 30. We are using this asymmetry to achieve our goal. We buy when RSI shows a strong momentum, that is, it goes above 70. But we do not wait until the RSI shows a strong downward momentum. We sell when RSI confirms a weakness at momentum at the 40 level itself. The approach that we will use for bullying the bands is called the breakout. The approach that we will use for bullying the band is called the Bullinger Band's breakout. We enter a long when price break above the Bullinger Band. We exit the long when price goes below the Bullinger Band. Triggering a buy when prices break above a level or a threshold is a very important concept in technical analysis. So, we will quote our first breakout strategy using the Bullinger Band. And, we will use the Z score to quote our first mean reversion strategy. You may remember that from the stationary test, we found that the Nifty prices do have a long term memory. So, any pure mean reverting strategy on the Nifty may not be profitable. We mix here both the trend and the mean reversion. To enter a long, we first check that the price should be above the moving average. If the prices are above a moving average, we pick a buying opportunity when the Z score goes below the threshold level. We exit the long when Z score goes above the threshold level. Effectively, this may look opposite to what we are doing in the Bullinger Band breakout strategy. It will be a very interesting exercise to see which strategy shows profitable results. Excellent, so let us now move to the coding. The strategy code that we are using to define the signals is the same as that we use to plot the indicators other than the on bars method. So in the on bars method for RSI strategy we define to enter a long position when the RSI goes above the 70 level and to exit the long position when RSI goes below the 40 level. In the on bars method for the Bullinger Band strategy we define to enter a long position when price go above the upper band and to exit the long position when prices go below the lower band. In the on bar method for the Z score, we define an enter long when price go above the moving average as well as the Z score goes below the threshold. We define the exit long condition when Z score goes above the upper threshold. So let us run this code for the RSI signals. There are only two long trades you can see by the two green arrows in this two years of data history. You can see that both these two trades are profitable. In the Bullinger Band strategy there are several trades. From the graph it appears that this strategy may also be profitable. The Z score strategy has the largest number of trades. We will see the back test to check whether or not it is profitable. Thank you very much for listening attentively to this short lecture. The next series of lectures will get even more interesting as we back test all these strategies.